Hi, I'm Mark Ween, and welcome to my lesson on the uncaged fretboard. We're going to be using the cage system to learn how to play any of our blues ideas anywhere on the fretboard. Now, you can use this concept for any kind of theoretical construct you've got, any kind of scale, arpeggio, whatever you have. We're applying it specifically to the blues because that's what these five lessons that we're doing here are about. This is going to help us with the next lesson. It's building off of the previous lesson. The cage system is one of those things that gets a bad rap because people generally tend to learn five box patterns uh, and not know what the notes are relative to each other. They don't know how to use them in any way other than just go up and down the pattern. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking one octave's worth and we're going to learn where our chord tones are, just like we did in the last lesson. And we're going to build some phrases and we're going to move them all over the fretboard. We're going to be doing a handful of ideas in the video lesson. The download actually has pretty much the entire fretboard worked out, both with the dominant seventh chord that we were using for the one chord in last week's lesson, and also the minor pentatonic scale, which we used for the four chord. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you the caged root system. Now, what we do with the cage system, for those of you who don't know what it is, we take each of your open chord shapes, the C shape, the A shape, the G shape, the E shape, and the D shape, and we pull the roots out of them. If it's a C chord, the root is the C. And the other two notes, the E and the G, we're not going to worry about. Uh, once we've got those notes, we can move them around the fretboard, and then we can hang the rest of your theory off, which is what we're going to do later. The C chord, the first finger and the third finger in that shape, those are going to be your roots out of that one. Right, and we can just move it up one fret so it matches your, uh, your hand out there. If we play the A shape, the notes on the third string and the fifth string are the roots. So I'll make the shape like this with my first and third fingers, or even first and fourth fingers. Um, to make it match, we're going to move up to the fourth fret with that. That way we're playing C sharp. Now notice there's the C shape where my third finger is, I'll put my first finger and then I'm playing the same notes, just in a different position. This concept's gonna become pretty important later. The G root pattern, we have roots on the first and sixth strings. Remember that they're the same notes. And then the open G string is gonna be the third note. This makes kind of a really wide stretch here. I'm gonna move it up to C sharp for you to make it a little bit easier for you to finger. First finger on the uh, sixth fret, third string. Pinky on the ninth fret on the first string and then your third finger on the ninth fret on the sixth string. Uh, if you can't play this, just make sure you know where those notes are. It's kind of a wide stretch, um, but if you can do it, actually it's kind of good for your hand too. It's like hand yoga. The E shape also has notes on the first and sixth strings, and then on the fourth string. So if we move it up to C sharp here, we've got the ninth fret again on the sixth string, ninth fret on the first string, and then 11th fret on the fourth string. The last shape is going to be your D shape. The open D note on the fourth string and then the second string D are going to be your root. So if we move it up to C sharp, you've got 11th fret on the fourth string and you've got 14th fret on the second string. If I go through all five of these shapes in C sharp, so there's your root patterns that we're going to be working off of. All right, let's build some phrases. We're going to start off with the C shape here. Now, within that C shape, we've got the third, fifth, sixth, minor seven, and then the root again. If we took one of the phrases that we started the solo with on the last lesson, the example solo, slide into the third from a half step below, five, six, and then the root, you can kind of see how that fits there. If we were to move up to the A shape here, I've got those same notes arrayed in there. There's the third, fifth, sixth, there's that seven again, and then the octave. Three, five, six, and then the root root. I can even, if I borrow a higher octave out of the next pattern, three, five, six, then the root there. If I come up to the G pattern, three, five, six, root root, also, three, five, six, and that's the root. Out of the E pattern, this one will look kind of like the A back here. 
three, five, six, root, root, and then the octave higher, three, five, six, root, root. The D shape, we've got three, five, six, root, root. The minor pentatonic scale, obviously is gonna have a different assortment of notes here. We've got the root, minor third, or flat three on your page, the four, there's the five, and there's your minor seven. And then you got your octave there. We're just gonna take something simple, root, three, four, five, three, root. All right, if we were to move up into the A pattern, it's right there. I can even an octave higher. All right, if we come up to the G pattern, G, there's the minor third, four, five, and then the minor seven. I can even do it in the same same root pattern but an octave higher from that. All right. We come up to the E pattern, we've got it there, we've got it there, and then also for the D pattern. What we've done today is we've given you something of a roadmap for the fretboard. Now instead of doing the full cage system scale pattern deal, what we've done is we've divided each one of them up into one octave bits. And with those one octave bits, you can play an idea in one place, and as long as you're keeping track of what the scale tones or the chord notes are, you can move them anywhere else on the fretboard. Go through the PDF that's supplied with this lesson and make sure that you're comfortable doing this everywhere in any key that you want to. You're gonna find that any vocabulary that you already have can be repurposed and moved around pretty easily.